Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice differential equation. We have y prime plus y equals x cubed. y prime is the derivative of y with respect to x, and y is the function we're looking for. So can we find a function such that when we differentiate it and add it to itself, we get x cubed? Is that possible? What do you think? Let's find out. So to be able to solve this problem, I'm just going to take some steps. First of all, we're going to think about what happens if we had zero on the right hand side. What's that supposed to mean? Replace x cubed with zero. We're not assuming necessarily that x is zero. We're just saying that there is a homogeneous version of this problem, which means there is no function on the right hand side. And obviously this equation is a lot easier to solve and it's related to the solution of the non-homogeneous case, which is what we have. Right? So to be able to solve this problem, we're going to do a couple different things. For example, you can think of it this way. Is there a function whose derivative plus itself equals zero? Yes. If you think about the exponential function, for example, can y prime equal y? Yes, e to the power x is the answer. That's not the only function. If you multiply e to the x by five, if you add a constant, right? Wait a minute. If you add a constant, is that gonna work? Well, it's not because the derivative of the constant is zero. But if you don't have a constant, then this will work. So any, any constant times e to the x will work. But how did we get that? By trial and error? You can do the following. Suppose y is e to the power kx, okay? And then we can kind of go from this one to finding the k. How do you find the k value, right? Wait a minute, why did you use e to the power kx? Can it be... Can it not be like k times e to the x? No, that's a solution for this one. This one is different. And I don't have a constant, but that's perfectly fine. We'll take care of that later. We already know that if e to the x is a solution, k times e to the x or c times e to the x is also a solution, don't we? So when you plug in this, uh, first I'm gonna find the derivative. How do you differentiate e to the power kx? You take the derivative of kx, which is k, and then multiply by the same thing easy, right? The exponential function, there's a rule for that. Now we're going to go ahead and plug these in. This is going to give us k e to the kx plus e to the kx equals zero. And now we'll take out e to the kx. That'll give us k plus one equals zero. We know that e to the kx can never be zero if x is real. Even when x is not real, it can't be zero. So we have to have k plus one equal to zero, which means k is equal to negative one. But how did we know that it's of this form? I'll, I'll show you there's another way to approach it. You can also use the differential operator. This means d plus one multiplied by y. It's not multiplied by, kind of these operators are acting on y. And when the d acts on y, it just becomes the derivative. And of course, uh, the identity operator is just gonna keep the same function, make sense? So this is equivalent to y prime plus y. And then you kind of set it equal to zero. From here you get d equals negative one, but it just means that you have to have e to the power something, something. Anyways, that's another way to approach it, but I think this method is better. But once you get the hang of it, you can kind of think of it as, oh, the characteristic equation from this is r plus one equals zero and r is equal to negative one and so on and so forth. Gives us the same idea, but since k is negative one, then our y is gonna be e to the power kx, which is negative x. Awesome, but it's only part of the solution. What do I mean by that? This is the homogeneous solution. So I'm gonna call that y sub h. Make sense? And what are we looking for? We're looking for the general solution, y sub g. And y sub g, the general solution, I don't know if we should use an uppercase or a lowercase, I'll use lowercase, should be something like the y homogeneous plus the y particular. What is a particular solution? Good question. We're gonna find that by making a guess, okay? Well, what do you mean by that? We're gonna try to guess the function, but that's not the, the only solution, or that's not the whole thing, because we need to put these two together. I'll show you what it looks like, don't worry about it. Let's just know at this point that to find the general solution, I already found the homogeneous case, I need to find a particular solution for the non-homogeneous case. So, and then we'll put it together. And how do we do that? 
we kind of need to use our original problem. So can we guess what kind of function y is going to be so that when I differentiate it and add it to itself, I'm getting x to the third power. Well, because I have a polynomial on the right hand side, that makes me think y should probably be a polynomial. What do I mean by that? I mean, polynomial is just powers of x that are non-negative integers, right? So we have something like y equals 2x, y equals x squared plus 5x, right? Something like that. But if you use a linear polynomial or a quadratic polynomial, they're not going to work because when you differentiate, it's going to be reduced in degree. And when you add it to your original, you're not going to get x cubed. So that means I do need a cubic polynomial. Does that make sense at all? Because if y is cubic, like ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, when I differentiate it and add it to y, I'm still going to have x cubed, which is cool. Let's do it. Differentiate y, and when you differentiate it, ax cubed is just going to be 3ax squared. I'm going to align the uh, like terms. And then bx squared is going to be 2bx, 2b or not to be, popped up again, plus c. The derivative of d is a 0 because it's a constant. Now we're going to go ahead and add these up. y prime plus y is going to be ax cubed plus b plus 3a as the coefficient of x squared plus c plus 2b x and plus 2d plus c. And I want this to be what? x cubed. Nice. So we're going to be able to compare these two polynomials. And in order for these to be equal for all values of x that are in the domain, then the coefficients have to correspond. In other words, the coefficient of x cubed must be 1 on the left and on the right. The coefficient of x squared and coefficient of x and the constant term, they all have to be 0 because they don't exist on the right hand side. Does that make sense? There is no x squared, there is no x, and there is no constant term on the right hand side. So that gives us four equations, four variables, we're good to go. A equals 1 is a good thing, and you should have known that because the only x cubed comes from y, it has to be 1x cubed. Because when you differentiate, you're going to get a quadratic. Makes sense? So you could uh, as well just avoid a, but that's okay. a equals 1, b plus 3a, which is b plus 3 equals 0, which means b is equal to negative 3. c plus 2b is equal to c minus 6 because b is equal to negative 3 is c minus 6 is equal to 0 and from here c is equal to 6 and then plug it into the last one d plus c is equal to d plus 6 which is 0 and then from here d is equal to negative 6. Awesome! We were able to solve for a, b, c, d. So this problem is as easy as a, b, c, d. Not just a, b, c but there are four letters. Okay, so what's that supposed to mean though? It just means that our particular solution is going to be ax cubed, which is x cubed, plus bx squared, which is minus 3x squared, plus cx, which is 6x, minus 6. Okay, that's just a particular solution. Are we going to add it? Yes. To find the general solution, we're just going to go ahead and write this down, the whole thing, and then add the homogeneous equation, which is e to the power negative x. But remember, if e to the power... Uh-oh, that's my alarm. Sorry about that. So if, if e to the power negative x is a solution, then c times e to the power negative x is also a solution, right? And you know why this works? Let me tell you. Since this equation or this part of the equation satisfies the homogeneous case, it's also going to satisfy the non-homogeneous case because adding 0 to x cubed is not really going to matter. Make sense? That's the whole idea. This will definitely work for x cubed and this will contribute nothing. Zilch. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.